Hey folks, welcome back. We're gonna do some more mixing today. I'm just gonna walk you through what I have done with this mix already, hopefully answer some questions I got. And let's start with the lead acoustic guitar. That's the main instrument we hear in this uh, in this track. Just to remind you where we are, we have put some summing on, we put some tape on, and I did some uh, mix bus processing here with the 33609 and the curve bender. Just a little bit of processing. And here we are. Cool. So let's take a listen to this lead acoustic by itself. I hear a couple things that need fixed. So what I've done here is I've put a Pro Q3 on. And I'm doing a little bit of attenuation here. I'm pulling down at the 200 hertz level, just sort of the mud area. I'm high passing around 70 just to get rid of any uh, foot stomps I was doing and any rumble. Okay, the next thing I've done is put a 1073 on. I'm not doing much with this processor. I'm high passing again just for safety. Pulled down a little tiny bit at 110 on a shelf. I'm pulling down again some of the mud at uh, around 360 hertz and boosting a little bit at the top. And that's it. Let's listen to that one right fast. I'm going to turn it on and then bypass it. really just giving a sort of a tone to it and on the uh, next part here's a compressor I'm compressing this with the uh, 2254 and I've got it at a light compression ratio and a pretty quick uh, release well for this compressor I don't have it on the pulled part the uh, sort of added bonus of this plug-in uh, it's just at the uh, at the uh, 400 milliseconds the divide by 8 is really cool but I don't think I needed it so here's what it sounds like with that compressor I'll start it without it and then turn it on now that's just grabbing some of the peaks of the of the pick attack and giving it sort of a rounder tone and lastly, I have a Pultec Pro, and we're doing a little bit of stuff here where I have an attenuation at the low uh, frequency here, about 30, and a boost up around 10K, which is sort of an air band on this, um, on this particular EQ. I have a peak at 2K and a peak boost at around 200. Now, if you noticed, a minute ago I pulled down some of the 170 hertz on the Pro Q3, and I'm putting this back in this particular case because I lost a little bit during the uh, compression and the Neve 1073, and this is actually a little bit different kind of a band um, than ours used on the Pro Q3. Giving a little more body back to it in a, in a much more uniform way, and I dig that sound. So let's now listen to that combined with the two acoustic rhythm guitars. Okay, let's listen to those rhythm guitars by themselves, and then I'll talk about these processes here. Okay, so on the acoustic guitar, the steel string guitar, which is the acoustic rhythm one, uh, let's listen to that a second. Now with the EQ engaged,
it sounds kind of odd right now, but we're going to get into uh, a, a few other things here in a second. But what I've done here is I've uh, high passed this uh, around 70, pulled down some of the resonance around 100, and also around 200. And that is what's giving it that sort of like, uh, sort of, it's almost a nasally sound right now, but it's really just getting rid of some stuff. I'm going to add some EQ in a minute on the acoustic nylon string, which is here. That has some resonances as well that are kind of muddy. So I've done sort of the same thing. I've pulled down around 200, around 100, um, and high passed it a little bit higher, up around 100. Yeah, they sound kind of nasty right now if I put them together, though. Those are actually also making room for the bass, which we're going to do in a second. Now, on this acoustic guitar that is the steel string guitar, I'm going to pull up a Pro MB, and you'll see that I'm kind of pushing down... even more on the attack of some of those strums. That's because when this was recorded, if you listen to the raw file, you can kind of hear there's a little too much body going on with those strums. And so I just got rid of them this way. Now, next up, I have another Poltec EQ. And on this one, I am uh, not doing anything with the uh, EQ P1, but on the mid-range one, I am boosting a little 200, tiny bit, and boosting a little around 1.5. Again, I know that sounds weird, but we're going to get there in a second. Now, on this part here on the uh, Soothe plugin, I've got a little bit of a bump here because I'm pulling out some of those highs. And I'm, I think I started with this preset called a bit too percussive. So it's, it's pulling down a little bit on those pick drums. And on the classical guitar, I'm just using the Helios. Now on the Helios, I am pushing a little bit um, at the 10K uh, shelf at the top, and I'm pushing a little bit around 6K, but I'm uh, cutting down here in the bass area at minus six uh, at around uh, 50, I believe that's 50, 50 hertz. So it's pushing a little air into it up there. Now those two together with all those processes on there, they sound like this. Kind of weird, I know. Right now it's still kind of weird. Let's listen to that in the bus going through the summing. got a little bit of a bus compressor happening here with the 2254 and what's going on here is I've got it on the auto release I've got the limiter off I'm compressing a little bit at three to one and sounds like this now Just sort of rounding it off a little bit. Now let's talk about the bass because the bass is really the bottom end of this mix here. I'm going to pull in the bass with those acoustic guitars and the solo guitar. You can start to hear now why I've done that with the acoustics and why they're kind of uh, thin sounding because the bass is really going to take care of this. Now, on the bass, let's just leave those tracks in while I work on this. On the Pro Q3, the first uh, little instance here, I've got a little bit of a roll off uh, right around 30. I'm pulling out some resonance around 85 and around 180. That's already more punchy. 
and um, it's sort of getting out of the way of the low end of the guitars. Now the 1073 comes in, and we have some radical stuff happening here. Let me turn this on. I've got a high shelf going. I'm pushing that a little bit because I want some of the higher end of that bass to come through. Around 360 hertz, I'm pulling back a little bit. That's the mud area there. And on the low shelf at 60, I'm pushing more into it. Um, that's to give more body to this bass. Now let me play that without the EQ, and then I'll turn it on. Yeah, let's get a little more mojo here. And next up is a compressor for this bass. I'm using the LA-2A Silver. And let's see how much gain reduction we've got here. I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing anything fancy. I've just got it on the comp setting. I'm not even using the emphasis uh, screw here. Okay, so what that's doing is it's sort of lengthening some of the notes and it's also giving some harmonic content. Let me turn it off and on. Right, that's starting to uh, sound really good in the mix now. Let's take a look at this pull tech at the end of the chain. I am pulling down a tiny bit at 30. That's really just to pull down sort of that little shelf that this makes at the bottom of, uh, of the curve. And I'm boosting a little bit around 8K, again, for a little bit of air. I'm pushing a peak a pretty good bit here on this bass at 2K. That's to get the sort of finger kind of sound of the, uh, of the bass. Let's turn that off and then on, and you'll hear the difference. So these are small adjustments that each one of these are doing, but they're, the cumulative effect is kind of huge. Also, I'm sending this into a submix here through the Neve summing, and I've got it on the low impedance. I found that that works really well on bass, and I'm using the old Renaissance Waves uh, plugin. This is uh, an interesting plugin that gives, um, oh, it's a long story what this does, but it, it adds harmonics to the sound, and will push things through a mix on smaller speakers a lot better. So let me turn that on. I have found that a little goes a long way with this plugin. So it's centered around 60 hertz, and so it's adding harmonics above that in relation to 60 hertz. So let's hear that again, and then I'll pull in the dobro. <laughs> On this Dobro, I'm not doing much at all. I'm going to turn on an EQ. I've got a high pass around 85. I'm pulling out a little bit of this resonance around 200. That 200 hertz is a real helpful thing to pull down a little bit. It's not much. It's negative 3 dB. But let me solo that during the playback and take a listen to it. It's a real annoying frequency to me at least, so I always tend to pull that down a little bit. Now, on the 1073, coming right up after it here, you can see this. I'm not really doing anything with this. I'm just using this as a tone box. I am. Uh, it's actually just going pretty much straight through. There's a tiny little bump here at the top shelf, which probably doesn't even matter at all. But I'm using this to, for uh, sort of a color box. Let me turn it off and then on. <laughs> It has sort of a natural compression with it. I think that has to do with the transformers in this particular EQ. And without. With. It's just a tiny bit more aggressive and it's going to cut through the mix a little more. So now, there's nothing on that, on that bus that that's feeding. So let's listen to those up to there.
Okay, so now let's start talking about some reverb and room tone. I'm using the Ocean Way Studio to get quite a bit of room tone from these. Let me turn that on right fast. I'm going to let everything that's playing pass through this plugin, and it's going to sort of imitate the Ocean Way Studio room. I've set it up as if we are standing in the corner and a microphone in the middle and uh, a little bit farther away. I've got the uh, high pass on both of these microphones. And let's listen to this with the mix. That's a huge difference in my opinion. Let's listen to that without it and then with it. Fantastic. After the Ocean Way, I'm using a Pultec. This is the HLF3C. And so what I've done here is I'm cutting out some of the low end of that room tone. And I'm also cutting out some of the high end of it. And that sort of tucks it into the sound and uh, makes it all fit together kind of nicely. Okay, let's check out the EMT plate. I'm using the plate B on this, and I've got no EQ happening, no pre-delay. I'm just going straight into this uh, plug-in here. I do have this low-cut filter here at 270 hertz. I usually use that, especially on acoustic music, because it, there's sort of a rumble down here that I like to get rid of. Let's listen to this involved with the mix. Let's listen to just that auxiliary right fast. Yeah, it's, it's sort of got a long tail on it, but I like it. Now let's listen to the ocean way by itself. Okay, with everything. Okay, the next reverb I have on here is the chamber, and I'm using the capital chamber. I'm using it, I think, in, okay, I was gonna say, I think I used this in default, but it's definitely not. I'm using room four, or chamber number four, and the old ribbon mic, which is a very warm sounding mic. I love this mic on this reverb. Uh, I've got it at the max decay. I've got a little bit of pre-delay on this and I'm filtering out uh, a little bit of the low end um, with a high pass. I'm also cutting some of the 5K. And with that reverb added, we have this. Okay, that's sort of giving the height of the reverb. Uh, and let's solo that and listen to it. Hey, cool, that's plenty of reverb. Now on this MicroShift plugin here, I believe that I'm only sending the lead guitar to that. Let me check right fast here. MT, uh, yep, only the, the lead acoustic is going to this micro shift, so there's not a lot going on. Um, but this micro shift uh, is adding a little bit of a chorus y kind of sound to it, so it's filling out um, the stereo image uh, just for this track. Turn, I'm going to solo that track and we'll listen to the micro shift with it. I'm going to crank this and exaggerate a little bit. can tell that a little bit goes a long way with that, especially in a solo mix like this. Okay, let's take a listen to the um, middle section here with the dobro solo. Because I'm going to pull in the violin here. Violin's doing some kind of percussive stuff here.
so I'm cutting out the low end, basically, all the way up to about 120 hertz. It's just not necessary on a violin to have that there, so I'm cutting it, cutting it out. And the LA-2A. That's more obvious on the verse, so let's pull it back to another verse here. That LA-2A is obviously there just to grab some peaks because most of the compression in this mix is coming from the mix bus. And let me pull that up here and take a look at it. Cool. Now, if I pull back to the acoustic solo, right before the acoustic solo, you'll see some automation I've got going on here on the violin sub. And if you listen real close, you can hear that what I was trying to do is sort of make that go away kind of quick because it's a crescendo, but I didn't want that. Right. Now, if I were to leave that the way it was it actually gets in the way so that's most of what this automation is doing it's just sort of riding along making a sort of a lyrical kind of moves here and there um, pulling down you know in this section where it gets kind of louder I also have some automation here on the lead acoustic, and this is sort of important because some of the uh, transients here were just too much. Uh, you'll see like in the solo right here. You can see I'm dipping down pretty good right here and then uh, coming back up when it gets kind of quieter. Now, some people would take care of that with just a parallel processing, like a compressor or maybe just a compressor on the actual track. But it just felt better to me to automate it. Yeah, that's it. That's all there is to uh, this mix. It's pretty simple, although I do have uh, quite a few processes here on some of the individual tracks. They're all just EQs and compressors. That's all that's going on, and an EQ and a compressor on the mix bus. So let's take a listen to this before and after. We'll have no processing, and then with the processing and the reverbs and everything else. Okay, here it is with no processing. <laughs> Yeah, that's a real simple mix. I've just got some uh, EQs, reverbs, compressors, nothing fancy. I got one little micro shift thing happening here. So I'll start this at the beginning and just let it play through. And uh, I appreciate you guys listening and watching these videos. Thank you so much. Please hit subscribe. Please hit the like. More videos are coming very soon. And again, thank you for uh, watching and for all your comments and questions. Mm -hmm.